the ATM zone detector indicators. These would really help you know that are we in an active zone or a dormant zone. And if you could save the bad trades in the dormant zone, you would really come out with a much better accuracy, I would believe. So let's integrate the ATM breakout catcher now on this chart of Dell. And we'd also put it on now with the zone detector. Uh, let's notice over here where my mouse pointer is right now. Uh, we have a blue bar, which means that the ATM breakout catcher has gone positive. And that could be further substantiated when you see the uh, strong signal on the x-axis of the chart right there. And this would mean that we'd normally just go long above the high. Now, why have I uh, marked this in a red circle? If you look up all the way up to the zone detector and zone fill indicator right there, they're at a value of zero. This means that the stock is probably in a dormant mode where volumes, ranges, things like that are not in its favor. So it's just going to be a one-off trade which is not going to work out probably. So this kind of a trade where you have a blue bar and which means the ADM breakout catcher is positive but it's not supported by the zone detector which means the zone detector is dormant again we would just not put on such a trade. Just like you see over here you have a red bar and again if you look all the way up to the zone detector we're at zero which means we're in dormant mode. Let's not put on uh, a cell setup below the low because we are not going to short a sell and and thank God we didn't put on this buy trade or the sell trade because that's what we got we got really rough up we got choppy sideways and it, that's an unnecessary loss now if you see this blue bar over here that's interesting because now you have at least a zone detector positive which means well whilst you may not be hyperactive but at least you're active now in an active zone uh, you could definitely put on some trades above the high. However, let's compare it with this last blue circle over there. Now in this case, notice you've got a blue bar and I'm talking about the last blue uh, circle there. You've got a blue bar and if you look up on the indicator, that's a, uh, a hyperactive, which means the zone detector, which is ZD and ZF, the zone fill, the, the green histogram is also positive. A hyperactive zone and that's where we're going long. So you've got all the backing of volume, volatility and things like that to help you and that's why you see a very nice takeoff that comes once the high is really broken out on this trade. Now let's address the issue of how do we place our stops and exit in a while but very quickly to recap, we'd like to buy if the breakout catcher goes positive and give greater weightage to the first breakout. And uh, to be to kind of explain that once again, let's pull up the chart uh, which we were doing. If we have a cell which is here and this is coming after an uptrend or a buy signal, that's a good cell setup. But if you look at this cell over here, it's really a continuation or a confirmation. You may like to put on a trade over here as well. But what I'm trying to say is the weightage of this trade is pretty good because this is coming after an up move or after a couple of blue bars so that cell is the first cell setup that you have and that's why that's going to carry some more weightage. Now if you look at the last one over here this is a first blue breakout because that's coming after a cell mode that's coming after a major downtrend in fact and that makes it a very good buy setup. So we're going to be paying some more uh, 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 weight to the first breakout concept that I just discussed. Uh, not that you can trade on the next continuing signals, but uh, again, it's more about putting on a, a greater quantity probably on the first breakout. What's most important as we discussed is we need to check if the ATM breakout catcher signal is backed with good price, volume, volatility action, and that could be done pretty easily by the ATM zone detector. Again, uh, to further clarify, if the breakout catcher goes positive, we'd at least like the zone detector indicator to be at a value of 1. Whilst zone fill may not be at a value of 1, at least we'd like it to be an active zone with the ZD at a value of 1. Now in case you have the ZF, which is the zone fill or the green histogram, as positive as well, that's that's an awesome trade to be putting on because you're in a hyperactive mode and you've got probably much more backing on that trade in terms of volume. Now if you look at the ATM zone detector at zero, we would just give the trade a pass because 
essentially we're in a dormant mode, we're likely to stay sideways, and that's not an area we'd like to uh, put on a new trade because there's a probability that we just get stuck in one of those typical sideways patchy moves. So that kind of sums up or summarizes how we go long or short on the uh, breakout catcher module. The nice thing is you also have a scan which could scan for new signals. So let's say if you're looking for fresh buy entries or fresh sell entries, you could quickly scan for fresh signals. And that would even give you those stocks which have a zone detector positive uh, along with it. So uh, pretty simple to find these signals and you could scan on any time frame, any asset class. Again, just a reminder that you do need volume data if you are going to be using the ZD and ZF indicators. Now how do we put stops on this? Well, the easiest way to put a stop is when you have a buy signal, just look at the last two or three bars, probably go as much as five bars if you can and find out a lowest point over there, find out the the support point over there and put on a stop. So again, the clue to putting a stop loss is look at the preceding three to five bars and try and detect a key support level if you're buying or a resistance level if you're selling. So use one of those lows uh, in the last three or, four, three or five bars. Uh, one thing is very uh, important when we are trading uh, the ATM breakout catcher model or for that matter any of the ADM strategies, we'd like to have a dual exit kind of model. The first exit should ideally be at a financial goal. So let's say if you're trading a daily chart and you've got something like 7 to 8 percent, you want to take half your profits and uh, let the rest be till you get a sell signal. So divide your exits and that's the nice way to do it because when you book half your profits at a financial goal, you could even put your stops at your entry price thereafter and you have full confidence and time to hold on to the balance of your trades. Now here's a, here's a chart of Apple and uh, uh, this is very interesting and you'd see the uh, last couple of months and how we traded on the Apple uh, signals on the ADM breakout catcher. Uh, there we go. Uh, we had a buy which set up over there and notice the buy took the high out and we went positive thereafter on the uh, uh, zone detector indicator so that's an active zone so maybe somewhere around that bar or the high of that bar would be where you'd put on your buy trades and that went uh, all the way up and that was about 160 or 65 I guess and that went all the way up to about 190 so you've got your financial goals for sure and then you've got a red bar below the low of which we'd like to go short notice it doesn't go below the low so we're not going short you're still long on the balance when you have another blue bar that appears, that's suggesting that we go long above the high. But again, we're going to watch the zone detector indicator, which is neutral or dormant at a value of zero. So no going long again. One more blue bar, but again dormant. We're not going to go long. A red bar comes in, and this time the red bar looks good and looks pretty good because you've got a hyperactive mode with the zone detector and the zone fill, the light green histogram positive, which means you've got the backing of uh, a lot of volume, a lot of interest, a lot of volatility. All of that stuff is going to help you go short below the slope. So once you go short below the low, again, that's a nice probably $20 move that you see from there. Uh, again, if you look at this blue bar right there, you've got a buy, but reject the buy. It's in dormant mode because if we bought above the high of that, you might be happy for the next two or three days, but that's not giving you enough money probably to uh, move out of your financial goals or for that matter uh, exit at a profit. So we'd avoid the buy trade that you see there clearly because the zone detector, zone fill, that's all in dormant mode so uh, we just like to stay away from that trade until and unless maybe at a later date we go hyperactive or active. Now we have a sell over here again avoid the sell to start with because we are in dormant mode but maybe a couple of bars later, maybe somewhere around this bar, you notice that the uh, zone detector has gone active, hyperactive, and probably somewhere here you're hyperactive, and you want to put on some good shorts uh, on this uh, trade. And that's what led a big fall. So from 160, you're down to close to about 85. So uh, that's what got us uh, into this huge move down. So virtually, if we just look at this chart from April, 2008 to October 2008, I would say you have something close to 100% strike rate. And the nice thing is you missed, uh, 
you missed the trades which were in dormant mode and that's what really 